Hello, good afternoon. Hope you're well. Grandmother clock is chiming. I'm so happy to have have her back up and running. She was for a while, but got her repaired yesterday. Hi, I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol called how you might be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life. I hope you are well. Everyone in my world is well. So thank goodness for that. Today, I'm just going to jump on in, um, in no particular order, I would say. I, ha you know, for those of you who don't know, I am, I, I do, I talk to people about this. I had, I had a different career for 30 years, but I've come to talk with and hear from a lot of people, excuse me, let me make sure that's not my husband, not, it's actually Amy Berger. Um, In, in talking with people, I will get questions. And there just seems to be a recurring theme a lot of times about these questions and concerns. So I'm gonna share them with you and please share yours with me. Um, I will occasionally be looking at the attendees and um, see what you guys have got going. Please answer each other's questions as they come up or give your opinions. I don't know everything, but I will, I'm happy to share what I've gleaned. Quick primer. For those of you who don't know, the ketogenic protocol is one whereby you lower your carbohydrate intake to a level where your liver stops pushing out glucose for fuel and our bodies happily flip over to burning fat for fuel. And it's fantastic. So let's talk about that. And that's about 20 grams of carbohydrate a day or fewer total, not net. Fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. People hear fatty sources of protein. One of the first things that come up is what can I eat? Well, anything you want, just lay off the carbs. There is, there are many food lists out there. There are some corrupted food lists that call themselves page four, but there's a copyrighted page four from Dr. Eric Westman. A link to it is below. That's the official page four. So it's full of foods. This is not a restrictive way of eating. You just lay off the carbs. So if you're concerned about what you can eat, look at the list or go to the grocery store and look at the meat counter, the cheese counter, some non-starchy vegetables, although vegetables are not required. Carbohydrate is carbohydrate, not, um, an essential macronutrient, meaning we don't have to consume it to get the results of, of the process that our liver does. Our liver can create glucose by itself without any carbohydrates being ingested. So just, you know, beef, pork, chicken, eggs with the yolks, just make sure all of those things come with their fat. You know, nature, other than rabbits, which don't have much fat, almost every source of protein comes with its fat. So poultry with the skin, bacon with the fat, you know, not turkey bacon or pressed made up bacon, but nice bacon, streaky bacon, as the Brits call it. Sausages, hamburger, pork chops with the fat, pork shoulder, barbecued, delicious. So what can I eat? You can eat anything you want. Just lay off the carbs. It's one of the first things people, it's like, we don't know how to eat anymore because we've been taught the wrong thing and we are bombarded. Think about this. You, I don't know, take a 10,000 square foot grocery store. I don't know how large they are. Think what percentage of that square footage is devoted to carbs. It's all in the center aisle, center aisles. Just shop the perimeter of the store. Go in, turn to the right, get some non-starchy vegetables if you want them, some leafy greens if you want them. About a cup a day, by the way, is the, the max of non-starchy vegetables before cooking, maximum a day, not minimum, and about two cups of leafy greens a day, maximum, not minimum. This is also before cooking. And then, you know, go around to the cheese department and maybe get yourself some nice full fat cheese. It's not unlimited, a couple of ounces a day. And then you're into the meat department and the dairy. And you make your circle around and maybe you stop at the wine department and get yourself a, a bottle of wine and check out. Leave all the stuff in the center of the aisle. So what can we eat? 
You can eat a lot of food. It is not restrictive. It's delicious. That can often lead to the next question. Well, all that fatty source of protein, what about my cholesterol, which will lead to heart disease, which will lead to death? That also has been incorrect information that not only have we been told, but most doctors have been taught and still believe. It's a false narrative. The fatty sources of protein don't lead to increased cholesterol necessarily. And keep in mind the, the one overall number that the doctors and PAs and everything, everyone like to quote that from your checkup, just the one number. Egad, your cholesterol is 322 or 238 or whatever. That number is not very informative. There are at least five components to cholesterol. There are two types of LDL. There's HDL, high density lipoprotein, which is the so-called good cholesterol. And there's triglyceride, which is not a bad cholesterol. You just need HDL and triglyceride to be in balance. One is inflammatory, one is anti-inflammatory. And you want that. We need something that's inflammatory in our system to help fight off infection and intruders. And we need anti-inflammatory to make sure that the in inflammation doesn't get out of check. Think of it, of it this way. Campfire, good. Forest fire, bad. So triglyceride can be a campfire. We don't want it turning into a forest fire. And we just have to realize this. You know, you don't have to go to medical school and break it all down. Just know that eating fatty sources of protein is probably in almost certainly an excellent way to lower triglyceride and raise HDL. It's the carbs that inflame us, not the protein and fat. It's just the opposite of what we've been taught. This is the bizarro diet. Leads to another question often. Where am I going to get my vitamins and minerals if I'm not eating many vegetables and no fruit? Because fruit is not on page four. It's just sugar. By the way, our livers don't care what form of carbohydrate we are consuming. It could be a Snickers bar, a Twinkie, a bran muffin, whole grain pasta, Ezekiel bread. It doesn't matter. It's coming out of simple sugar, glucose. That's what happens. So where am I going to get my vitamins and minerals? And this also is sometimes ties into another question. And what about constipation? If I'm not eating vegetables and I'm not getting fiber, eh? well, this is the vet. Most of the nutrition is not coming from vegetables. It's very mostly water and just not high in nutrition. And just about everything you can, you need, you can get from the foods on page four. And as far as constipation, sometimes we are constipated because we've been feeding ourselves the wrong thing. Keep in mind that going less often is not constipation. That's just less waste. And because this is a very efficient, nutrient-dense protocol, there's literally less waste. You know, do we want to eat a whole bunch of food and then have to have a long time in the bathroom doing number two? No, that's a lot of waste. So our food is going to waste. And our food is going to waste. W-A-I-S-T and W-A-S-T-E. Before I get any further, what am I drinking? I'm asked essentially every video, every live video. Even when I explain it, I'm still asked in comments below. Tall glass, full of ice, mostly diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry, and a squeeze of lime. That's what I'm drinking. It's very crisp and it keeps my, my gob wet so I can keep on talking. So if you're not having pain when you're trying to have a bowel movement, and you're, you know, you're not constipated, you just have less waste. So again, bizarro diet. Another question that will come up, and I'm asked about this personally, and in general, what about excess skin? Somebody wants to lose a lot of weight. I've had people be very transparent and say, I really want to lose a lot of weight, but I really don't want to have wrinkles or saggy skin. Because we have to choose our, 
or preference. I am asked personally about my skin. My skin is what my skin is. I was a normal, gradual loser. It took about three years to lose the 97.4 pounds. 47 of those pounds came in the first year. So that was a normal, excellent pace. I was thrilled with it. That's on average less than a pound a week. And then two years to lose the next 50. So that's on average 25 pounds a year. So do the math. Not Speedy Gonzalez. I didn't care. I wasn't. Everything else got better long before the weight came off. Long before the weight came off. I mean, the weight started quickly. You know, we have the big flush of water. And then it was quite gradual. And some days and some weeks and some months where I was higher than the day before or the week before or the month before. And then I'd, be, I'd go down. So sagging skin. I'm okay with my skin. I'm 62 years old. I started when I was 55. I was going to have crepey skin anyway because I'm 5'1". I've had three pregnancies, one hysterectomy, hip to hip, and my second child was a 10-pounder. I was going to have crepe. So I have crepe. Don't care. I have wrinkles. Oh, well. Um, I would say I don't do anything in particular for my skin. Some people swear by devices and topical applications. I, when I I'm in the shower. I keep some baking soda in a watertight container and I scrub my face with a little bit of it after I've done everything else. And then I often just put Vaseline petroleum jelly on my face. Sometimes nothing afterwards. As far as my, my body skin, I don't do anything. I'm pleased with my skin. Mostly that's genetics. I, I have to believe. It is not because of autophagy because I don't do that word. I eat when I'm hungry and that's every day. Some days it's I eat less. But I don't arbitrarily not eat when I'm hungry for any reason. Some people are thrilled with that, doing that, but it's not, my skin is not the result of that. I'm going to quickly turn to some questions here. Um, think, okay. Try it with blueberries. Be careful with the berries. They're not on page four. They have a low glycemic index. So I actually have from our private, you can see all of our eggs. These are from our backyard chickens. And if you see two white containers there, they actually have blueberries from our garden, but very sparingly do we use them. <laughs> Jennifer, happy, happy Saturday from Saskatoon, Casey. Um, there are several patrons here. I'm going to give a quick uh, plug for Patreon. I have a, pri a private support group on patreon.com. It's linked below. And... It's a, it's a private one. And for the pledges, depending on what the pledge is, you get 20 videos from me a month sitting in my kitchen, weekday mornings, sometimes incoherent, um, 20 a month, about a half dozen, five or six patron-only live streams on Crowdcast a month, about five or six patron-only video group sessions on Zoom a month, and monthly one-on-ones with me, just a penny. And I appreciate the patrons, and I've often said, I believe people join the group not to get access to me, but to get access to each other. <laughs> Lee writes, I did my total gym this morning for particularly my patrons know. I got the total gym out of the closet that where I had to live for three years. And about six weeks ago, started pretty regularly, five days a week. I only spend about 15 or 20 minutes a day on it. And I break that up throughout the day. And I really enjoyed it. I think it's a brilliant piece of equipment. Total Gym is not a sponsor. I would love it if they were. And I don't have the fanciest one, but um, it's really a smart piece of equipment. And it's, you know, those of us who are, are, are heavy or have been heavy, jolting exercises can do more damage than good. By the way, exercise, that's another question that comes up. Do I, do I have to exercise? No. Uh, the joke around go keto with Casey is I don't exercise. I just dress like I do. Now I'm doing the total gym, but I've, it's nothing, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to the gym and getting on the treadmill and, and jot. No, I do the total gym. And then I get my steps and I walk my dog. So exercise is an effective tool 
for feeling better, for core strength, for bone density, for clearing your head. It is not effective for fat loss. That all happens with the carbs. Um, okay, I'm usually, I usually eat twice a day, but want to eat when I'm hungry until I, but don't want to, but won't, but wait to eat until I'm hungry. I don't even categorize them as meals anymore. They're just plates of fuel. I think we can get into a little bit of a trap when we, when we hang on to the old instructions, you know, three meals a day, two snacks a day, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. A meal should include, this is the way I was raised and my mother was raised, I'm sure, you know, it should have a, a protein, a starch and vegetables of two varying colors and rolls or bread or biscuits or whatever. But and this is the true, I, I know with a lot of people with whom I speak and hear. My lovely mate, who's never had a weight problem, but started doing this about six months after I, because of he wanted to, he heard the lectures I did. Because I was listening to them. Dr. Eric Westman, Stephen Finney, Jeff Volick. I was, I was listening to these when I started. I started doing this because I didn't want, I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. And I was, I was on deck for that. I was pretty sure my next checkup, that was going to be the conversation. Um, so I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. Most people know I've been diagnosed and treated for cancer three times in my life, starting when I was pregnant with our third child. And then again, a few years later, and then again, a few year, years later with different cancers. And I somehow could, could just face the fact that I might die of cancer, but I did not want to tell my family that I might lose a foot or a kidney or my eyesight to type two diabetes. And I really didn't want to take insulin. I was in a bad frame of mind, a bad place. My life has always been great inside my brain. It was not good. So I Googled how to not take insulin for type two diabetes. I came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman. And that explained how to do it. It was very calm, very simple. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. So I started the very next time. Hey, how do, this, is the, this is a question. How do I start? The next time you put food in your mouth, leave off the carbs. That's it. You don't have to go out and buy special food. You certainly don't have to buy special supplements or kits or pills or powders or bars or anything. The next time you put food in your mouth, leave off the carbs. If the next time you put food in your mouth, you got it at Hardee's, pull off the bun and don't eat the fries. It doesn't have to be fancy. And then the, the, time, the next time you eat after that, do it again. And then the next time. And that's essentially what I did. I didn't tell anybody I was going to do it. I, did, I, I, you know, I tried so many times to feel better and improve my health and certainly had tried to lose weight. I'd given up on losing weight. So I wasn't going to tell anyone I was making a change because, you know, you don't want to get the eye roll. Oh, sure, Casey. Good luck. I'm sure I'm sure you'll be successful. I just left off carbs. And from January 8th, 2014, which is when I saw that video, my life has been unbelievably changed. There is no way to describe the difference in how I feel about the world, about myself, about my health. I feel better than I did when I was 32 and I'm 62. I certainly look better than I did when I was 32. I started putting on weight seriously when I was in my mid twenties with that 10 pound kid. I put on 60 pounds with that pregnancy. He was our second and I just never came off. And then I became sluggish. And then now I had two children and my husband was working three jobs and all the explanations that we give ourselves. And I just ate. I had loneliness, irritation, boredom. And I told myself I was really hungry. Those were just poor excuses. So anyway, how do I start? Next time you eat, leave off the carbs. You don't have to tell anyone you're doing. Another question that comes up, what if the people around me don't, don't follow this? That's okay. You can, you can enjoy meals with them, just lay off the carbs. 
There's almost no restaurant even that you can go to that you cannot find perfectly legitimate keto-friendly foods and then leave off all the other stuff. Hey, Pierrot, how's Boston? Uh, B. Gray writes, once you get the energy from lower carb eating and lower weight, there is more energy for more fitness, however you like to do it. There have been people that have returned activities they forgot they even ever loved because they were so far in the past. No, uh, I move a lot. I actually, and I work in our gardens a lot. We have front and back gardens are both naturalized with a place carved out for the chicken yard and our pond. And there are a lot of plants that, you know, we don't have turf. So a lot of herbs and wildflowers and beautiful things, and then misplaced plants as we call them. And so I will pull those and I'll take them up and put them in the compost, which is in the chicken yard. And then the chickens scratch through them and poo on them and scratch over some more and we have compost. I can, I can walk, walk along totally bent over with my five gallon bucket, pulling a misplaced plants, remaining bent over. And I can do that for a long period of time. I couldn't have done it before and I wouldn't have done it before. One thing, mechanically, my stomach was so large, I couldn't bend over. I can't share it here, but you can go to my blog, caseyderang.com and see some of my before photos. I was a big person and had been morbidly obese for about 30 years. Um, You know, there is a lot of confusion out there. Instructions that we're not doing it right if we don't do it this way. That's bull. Can I just say it's bull? Whatever works, works for you as an individual. So find out what works for you. I can tell you that what I'm doing would probably work for just about anyone. Another question, uh, and then fill in the blank. I, will I be able to do this if I have fill in the blank? Hypoglycemia, no, excuse me, hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, no thyroid, th uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, no gallbladder. If I have passed menopause, I'm living proof of that. And I had a hysterectomy when I was right after our third child was born because of the cancer. So, yeah, we often want to find maybe a little chink in the armor so that we, we can have an explanation why we, we can't really be successful at this so we can go ahead and eat our potato chips. By the way, nobody needs a potato chip. And I didn't do this for years. I knew low carb worked for me since 1977 when I was a sophomore in college. But I told myself over the years as I got heavier and heavier, and I was real cute in college. I needed to lose like 13 pounds that I put on, you know, being in college, living on campus. And so I got Dr. Atkins' new diet revolution, but it cut out the carbs. I was still, in those days, you went to the cafeteria on meeting, eating plans. I just laid out the carbs, lost the 13 pounds, threw the book away. I wish I had it now because I would get Jackie Eberstein to sign it for me. By the way, Jackie Eberstein, who ran the Atkins Clinic with the late Dr. Atkins, is a friend of mine, and I'm going to put a link in here. What I hope to be the first of many events, it's Casey's Keto Connections. The first one, the first guest is Jackie Eberstein. This is Wednesday night, and Jackie is the world expert on this. Dr. Um, Dr. Westman says, you know, she was my first teacher on this. And if you get a chance to hear, hope I can post this. Oh! I didn't mean to do that. Close. Clicked on the wrong thing. There's a link. It's a registered event. But if, if Jackie Everstein is asked a question about this, anything, hormones, stage of life, carbs, cravings, male, female, doesn't matter. If she's asked a question and cannot answer it, doesn't have the answer for it, Nobody has the answer for it. So anyway, um, it should be fun. It'll be a live stream. It's not on YouTube. It's on Crowdcast. And you can enter questions in advance um, once you register. 
and then the questions remain visible. So if you're watching it on replay or something, you can click on that question and it takes you to that part of the stream. So anyway, I wish I still had that book because I would, I would get Jackie to sign it for me. But I told myself over the course of years, I know low carb works, but there's no way I can go with the rest of my life without eating tortilla chips. I would say that. Close second was, I can't give up pizza. And then I would jokingly, you know, make the crass comparison, which I now realize is crass and also just not funny um, in any way. Is you know, pizza is crack. No, it's not. It's food. And I told myself I couldn't give it up. And I couldn't until I did. And we do that a lot. We tell ourselves what we can't do. Or we jokingly say, yes, easier for you, but I'm addicted to sugar. We're all addicted to sugar. It's the way we're wired. Because remember, no matter what, what you put in as a carb, it comes out as sugar. Our brains are addicted to the sugar, which is why we keep eating even, well, even though we're full. And we just ate. An hour ago, and now we say, I'm hungry. No. We are often illogical with ourselves. I was illogical with myself for three decades. And illogical about other things that had nothing to do with food. So I've, maybe I've been illogical for 62 years. What is t shirt? What is t shirt? What am I wearing? It says go heat with Casey. I don't know what you mean t-shirt. Oh, by the way, another by the way. Teespring, the platform on which I design some of my just fun things. I made a sticker that I, you might be able to see it below. And t-shirts that say I'm stronger than a cookie or stay keto, stay healthy or mugs, coffee with Casey. They're having a, they're sponsoring a discount. It's not a discount for me. So if you go to Teespring, click on one of the items below, go to my store. If you're interested in one, put in the code now I can't remember. Bounce back. B-O-U-N-C-E-B-A-C-K. Bounce back. And you'll get, a, I think, a 10% discount. I love how you guys are. Uh... What is TSH? Thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone. That is a test that is done. I do not have any thyroid issues of, that I'm aware of. So I don't, I think if I had them, I would probably know something was wrong. Uh, I have no health complaints. Imagine this, 62, used to be pretty miserable physically, borderline bad on everything as far as blood tests go, lack of energy. My joints hurt all the time. And now nothing hurts. My only little thing is I have developed, and I don't think it has to do with keto, Something called Raynaud's phenomenon, which is nothing to do about it. it. Just is so. Every now and again, if I get near something cold, my fingertips will go white. Sometimes my toes will go white. And I just warm them up and it's okay. Mary Ganes writes, I've learned not to have emotional attachment to food and eat only when I need to. This is the biggest challenge. So here's the protocol again. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. That last part is the hardest one. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Some of us don't know what hunger, actual empty hunger feels like. Another concern people have, but I'm, I'm an emotional eater. I've always used for, uh, food to cope. No, we've used food to not cope. We've used food to deflect coping. We've used food to not deal with anything that's stressing us out. I mean, really. Around Okita with Casey. It's on the calendar. By the way, calendars. <laughs> 2020 calendars. Six dollars. I reduced them. Sent out some yesterday. One of the pages say, if, if food is not the problem, if hunger is not the problem, food is not the solution. Food does not fix anything. Food does not bring loved ones back to life who have passed. Food does not make our boss nicer. Food does not 
help us pre- prevent getting infected with COVID. Just the opposite. There's never been a better time to, be- to get healthy, to get our blood sugar under control and our blood pressure and our weight. Never been a better time. Food does not make our children easier to deal with. Food does not make our partners easier to deal with. None of that. People will say, but our family food is love. No, love is love. Food is fuel. If you love somebody, love them. And if you love somebody, for goodness sake, quit pushing food on them. That's not love. And if somebody loves us and they know that we're avoiding eating certain foods, how much love is that if they insist? Oh, come on. I made it for you, but I don't eat cake. Well, that's not very nice. I made it for you. Sorry about that. Eat it yourself. We have to learn how to stand up for ourselves. We have to learn how to... What was that? We are responsible for our choices, particularly what we put in our mouths. So we can't, we can't say, well, I did it because I went to a wedding and everyone else was eating wedding cake. So is anyone really going to care? Is the bride and groom going to be offended and then probably separate because you didn't have wedding cake? No. I did it because um, it's a tradition. I ate it because we always eat this. Well, the tradition started somewhere. Start a new tradition. It it sounds harsh. But if we want, we just have to decide what we want. If we want to feel better, get off medications, get our brains back, get our energy back, reduce joint pain, reduce acid reflux, irritable bowel syndrome. These are all things that this will address. And maybe lose weight. If that's what we want, then just follow the protocol. Yes, it's not fair that some people can be perfectly happy and healthy and beautiful and trim and eat whatever they want. Oh, well. Nobody said life was 100% fair. But the good news is we have the answer. It's not a mystery. We have the answer. We just need to do it. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Jackie Everstein, can't wait to see her. Again, um, people have asked about Dr. Westman's keto retreat in Beaufort. Question mark about that because of, of obvious reasons. That would be if it happens in January 2021. Um, okay, I, I have been asked this. Miss Miss Joyce Fox, how long do you keep your eggs on the counter? The whole time. Fresh eggs that have not been scrubbed in ours have not. It has the shells have what's called a bloom on them, and it's it it's, makes it very something that's not porous. Store bought eggs have almost certainly been scrubbed and are probably four or five six weeks old, and so they're they are more porous. So those need to be refrigerated. But we eat so many in a day, including our dog Jack, um, and that big that big thing right there. I'm making his food. I make, once a month, I make him keto food. It's chicken thighs simmered until they're so cooked that even the bones crumble. Um, then I process it with uh, some flax meal and some eggs. And then I put it in the refrigerator. And then he also gets scrambled eggs for breakfast. And then he has his dog food for But anyway, so they don't get scrubbed and they last a long time. But we eat probably a dozen a day. And some days we get a dozen and some days we get 15 and some days we get nine. So nice rotation. Uh, Joanne Sandoris, does it address arthritis pain and progression? Many people. Now, I did not, I was not diagnosed with arthritis, but I felt like I was going there because everything hurt, right? Eh, my back, my, my knuckles, my wrists, I just everything hurt. Uh, that, that was one of the first things I noticed. Probably in two or three weeks, that was gone. Now, the, you know, there are varying types of arthritis and severity. People have reported that that their pain has, has subsided, it, 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 if not gone away, all the way. But th- there are really good stories about this. 
Lee writes, uh, I kind of go back and forth because of the, of the stress and no support with my family in life now, but I will keep kicking. See, here's the thing. We must own the fact that food does not, it's not a de-stressor. It's the stressor many of the times. We feel better for the nine seconds and eight inches that the food goes down our esophagus. And then as soon as it hits our stomach, we're like, why did I just eat that? Didn't even taste good. And I still have the problem. I still have the problem. And now I've just eaten something I does not serve me. So food is not a de-stressor. It is the stressor. It is not love. It is not sport. It is not entertainment. It's fuel. And we just, as was written, we just need to detach the associations we have with food from the things that food has no impact on. You know, I don't know. You can think, I'm, I need to redecorate my den. And so I ordered a pizza. Right? It's, 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 what? That doesn't make any sense. The pizza's not going to redecorate your kitchen. Thanks for allowing me to be part of your day. Um, remember to keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry, no matter what the clock says. And stop when you're satiated. That's a big one. We eat more food than we need, almost always. We don't have to clean our plate just because it's on there. Start up with a smaller plate. There are lots of ways we can get be successful on this. But the protocol doesn't change. All those rules lead to success if we follow them. So thank you very much. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Cover your face. Be strong. Let's just do what we can to help each other out. And I will see you next time. Thanks.